The Toronto Maple Leafs make a massive trade with the San Jose Sharks, sending Timothy Lilgren to the Sharks for a defenseman and multiple draft picks. We're going to break down this trade and more later on this episode. Before we start, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone that is subscribed. And if you're a part of the almost 89% that aren't subscribed and you're enjoying this daily NHL news, it's completely free. Make sure to go down and hit that subscribe button and be kept up to date with everything around the league. But with that, Casey, let's just hop straight into the trade. And we see a trade alert from the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Toronto Maple Leafs send, like I said, Timothy Lilgren to the San Jose Sharks for a defenseman, Matt Benning, a third and a sixth round pick. Now, just looking at this from the outside, Casey, what's your initial reaction on this trade? Yeah, I think Brad Schlevin cooked here. I think this is something we've been waiting for for quite some while. It was just getting to that point where the, the trigger is going to be pulled. And eventually, you know, it did happen this evening, which a lot of us weren't really ex expecting. It was talked about. There was rumors going out throughout the day. But then we got the trade, uh, getting Matt Benning and two picks, which I think is very good value for Timothy uh, Lilligren. Uh, one thing I am going to miss about him is everybody commenting that I uh, pronounce his name wrong down below in the comments section. But uh, I think it it's a great trade for Trump because you're getting that 7th, 8th D kind of guy in Benning in return, but also getting some draft capital uh, to sweeten the deal here. And you're getting that big contract out the books, of course, Mary. And the biggest thing is getting a guy like Benning, he's a right handed defenseman, so you're not losing anything positionally. Lilgren played the exact same side, so you're still getting that. He's 6'1", he's about the same size, but he does play a bit of more of a defensive game. I know Lilgren, a lot of people didn't like him because of his defensive game, but we've also seen Matt Benning have some offensive output, putting up 24 points just a couple of seasons ago. Now, the biggest thing is, I want to say this trade was not really, like, a lot of people were surprised. Everyone knew Lilgren was gone. I mean, I've recorded a full 10-minute video just an hour ago just for this trade to happen and that not be relevant. But getting Matt Benning in on this team, we know that Lilgren was the eighth defenseman. We're going to go into his salary in a tiny little bit. But looking at this team, this is what it seems like Craig Berube really wants to run. You still have a guy like Yakimpa. You still have a guy like Matt Benning coming in. Casey, do you think Matt Benning might be able to make a push to take that sixth spot? Or do you think he's kind of on the back of the order behind guys like Yakimpa and a guy like Hunter Timmons? I mean, that, that's a really good question because this is a guy who has been frequently kind of getting healthy, scratched in San Jose. And, you know, San Jose doesn't have the best team. We're just going to say it. But, you know, if he's getting scratched down there, maybe there's something behind the, the scenes that we're not seeing uh, through the media down there because obviously there's not as much coverage for a team like San Jose than there is for a team like Toronto. But I do like this in the sense that he fits the Brad Schliving facelift that he's done to this defense uh, over these last couple of seasons. He is a little bit of a bigger guy. He's a right-handed shot guy. He's a guy where if a, one of those guys on the right side does go down with injury, there's no problem with him fitting into that system whatsoever. So I think this is a great great move for Toronto because uh, like we're going to talk about a little bit the salary is definitely an improvement for Toronto in that aspect but uh, I think this is a great trade for Toronto and we're really going to get to see it, see it uh, pay off over these next couple of months and I mean looking at a guy like Logan he was a former first overall pick and I remember when they drafted him I was quite excited he hasn't really found his footing we've seen him go down with a couple injuries and it seems like management and especially Craig Rube wasn't he wasn't really their favorite so him losing the spot him being an eighth defenseman yes you lose out on a guy that does still have room to grow he's 25 years old I'm sure saying this now he's gonna go win the Norris and the Hurt with the San Jose Sharks in Toronto Maple Leafs fashion but moving on from Logan, you also get draft capital the Leafs are gonna go into this deadline with even more draft picks yes the sixth round pick is not going to be the make and break but maybe this is what helps get a retained on a bigger pitcher. Maybe you move on from a second or a first with this third and a six to really go out and solidify this top six in the Toronto Maple Leafs team. These draft picks are bigger than a lot of people are going to see and also filling in that eighth or seventh, depending on Yakimba's just kind of health, is a big part of it as well. But the biggest thing that we are going to talk about is the salary. Now, when you're looking through this list, you can see there's so many defensemen on this Leafs team. You have Yakimba on the one-year deal at 1.5. But the biggest thing is, is Matt Benning only comes in at 1.25 million. Why does this matter? Because Timothy Logren was making 3 million. 
So when you have a guy like Matt Benning come in, when you have a guy like Yanni Hockenpah coming back from injury, this helps the cap space. Two of these players are worth what just Timothy Logren was being paid, and you also get some spare change on it. Casey, do you think with this they're going to activate maybe a guy like Yanni Hockenbach? Or do you think maybe they use this at deadline to go out and replace a guy like Logren, pick up another Ford? Do you think this cap space is going to come in handy in the next couple of days? Oh, it's a hundred percent gonna come in handy because you're you, you don't want to pay an eighth defenseman three million dollars a year because that that's just something that a a nine hundred k guy a spot that he can fill up. But you get Matt Benning in here who is at one point two, just over that number. So you're getting more than a half of that salary from Lilligren now in your available cap space that, like you said, you can utilize to bring in Hockenpah once he is fully healthy and comes off the IR. Or, like you said, if Hockenpah isn't quite ready, you can go out and make another trade where you have now about $1.8 million in wiggle room to go work with. So I do think this is a very great move in the sense that Toronto's cap situation hasn't been the best over these last little while so getting any bit of money that you can at this point in time available for your organization is big even though if you guys at home maybe don't see it as big as what it seems but when you're looking at a guy coming in at about 1.8 million dollars that's a guy who can come in and make an immediate impact for your team whether it's in the bottom pairings of the defense whether it's in the bottom six this is money that is not just going to be wasted from Lilligren sitting up in the in the rafters to now actually using that and utilizing it to their advantage and I mean we're talking about the eighth defenseman I mean we've seen a guy like Philip Myers come in and play more games than Lilligren like I said, Lilgren didn't have the trust of Craig Brube. Having $3 million just sit there not being used is something the Leafs cannot do. I mean, we've seen it with TJ Brody in the playoffs last year. Not that the salary matters once you get into the playoffs, but having a player of that just kind of stature and that type of money in the press box is not making sense for the team. What would you guys' initial thoughts on this Logan trade? Do you think they got too little, more than you expected, or exactly what you wanted for him? But we'll hop straight into the second topic, which is on Fraser Minton. Now, this did come out yesterday, and it's where Fraser Minton was sent down to the AHL. He was out during training camp with a high ankle sprain that he had during the rookie tournament in September. But Casey, seeing Fraser Minton get back in this lineup, seeing Fraser Minton sort of making it back and playing professional hockey with the Marlies, could you see a guy like this make it up and maybe even join the bottom six of the Leafs or the middle six of the Leafs, depending on how he starts the season down there? Yeah, I don't want to jump the gun right away, but this is a guy who we've been really high on here uh, on the show. I mean, we talk about him consistently because he's such a great prospect that the Leafs have up their sleeve. So now we get to see him come over from the juniors, play with the big boys in the AHL, and if he can continue his dominant success like he was in the juniors, down with the Marlies, down in the AHL, there's definitely no doubt in my mind that if something happens this season where they are dying, dying for a centerman, they will bring Fraser Minton up. And that's the biggest thing, too. I know with a lot of Leafs fans, myself included, you're looking at this team. You're looking at the center depth. And yes, Max Domi has been good on this team as well. I love him on this team. But the biggest thing is I'd almost rather him slide to the wing. Maybe you even try something out for a short period of time in Bobby McMahon. Fraser Minton and Max Domi. Maybe you trade David Kampf in a second trade because we're seeing that Brad Treliman is not afraid to move on from players that are not making this lineup or not playing the style he wants. Not saying David Kampf is not doing that because defensively he's great. But overall, I could see Fraser Minton getting a quick stint with this team. Maybe it's at the end of the year. Maybe it's sooner than we expect. But what are you guys' thoughts on everything we talked about? What's your thoughts on the Logan trade? What's your thoughts on Fraser Minton getting back to professional hockey after being out in September? Leave a comment down below. We love reading your comments while you're down there. Leave a like, subscribe, share this with your friends. I've been your host, Mark Pye, with my co-host, Casey, and take care.